Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is, what is it? It's Thursday, June the 2nd, 2022, 1038 in the morning. And we're in the book of Micah, chapter number four today. So if you'll turn your Bibles there with me, we'll read together through it. 13 short verses here, a relatively simple chapter, honestly. And it's a little bit of a nice departure from what we've been dealing with. <coughs> the sin and judgment can get wearisome at times. And so uh, we got a, a little bit of a reprieve from it. So let's pray and look into Micah chapter four and see what the Lord has for us. Father, we love you. We ask your blessing and help as we read and study today. Give us wisdom from what we read. Help us to comprehend the scripture well. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Micah chapter number four. This is going to start out talking about the millennial reign of Christ. We have mentioned already that Micah is a contemporary of Isaiah. They both prophesied about the same time. And Isaiah talked about the millennium a great deal in that book. We've covered all 66 chapters of Isaiah in the past. So if you're interested in uh, seeing those, just look in the archives, either on YouTube, uh, look up Lighthouse Baptist Church, Flint, Michigan on YouTube. You'll find our page and all of the playlists there. Also the video section on Facebook, all of the playlists there. So uh, he's going to talk about the millennium along with Isaiah. Verse number one, Micah chapter number Number four. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills. The people shall flow unto it. That may even sound familiar if you did the Isaiah devotions with us. <clears throat> this is when Jesus Christ sets up his rule and reign from Jerusalem on Mount Zion, and all of the people are going to flock to that city. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth, uh, I'm sorry, shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So people will be excited about seeing the Lord and uh, going to the house of the Lord. That's going to be a good day, isn't it? And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so uh, there isn't going to be war on the earth during the time of the millennium. Of course, the Prince of Peace will be reigning and they're not going to have any reason to have any weapons of war. So they're going to turn those weapons of war into farming implements, something useful and helpful. Verse number four, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. So it's going to be a time of great peace. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. And so those verses that we're speaking of making uh, the, the halt a remnant and things of that nature, talking about the crippled individuals, handicapped people. What he's saying here using that language is that even those who are weak and struggling, God will restore. And if you, if you follow the scripture and you start in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, you go back to the millennial reign of Christ, you see that God's plan is to restore everything and everyone back to his original t intent like it was in the Garden of Eden. And so in that day, that's going to occur. Isn't that going to be a good day? 
Now, uh, the rest of the chapter, four, five more verses, shifts the tenor. Uh, so much for our reprieve. It's over. And what Mike is going to tell the people here is, these great days are coming, but before you get to them, you got to go through some tough days. So let's read those. Verse 9, Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. <clears throat> so there's no leadership. There's no one ruling and helping uh, in Israel. And so they're going to go through some difficulty and some struggle. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city and thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon, there shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, Let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, <clears throat> neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. And so what God's telling them here is nothing worthwhile comes about without a struggle first. And all of these promises of the great millennium and when the kingdom is established in Jerusalem and all the nations of the earth are going to flock there, that's all going to come about. But first, there's pain and travail. Jesus referenced uh, a woman who, uh, while she's going through the struggle of childbirth, says, I never want to do this again. But as soon as she holds that newborn baby, her heart changes, and she's glad that she went through what she went through. And so even that example is used here in Micah chapter number four of childbirth. Nothing worthwhile comes about without first great struggle and effort. And that's true for you and I today. You want God to use you in a great way, there's going to be some struggle and some effort that you've got to put forth there. All right, pretty simple chapter here this morning, only seven and a half minutes, three to go, five, six, and seven, and that's the end of the book of Micah. Thanks for watching along with us. Uh, please let everybody know that we're out here by like, love, or sharing the post, and we'll see you tomorrow morning to do it all over again with Micah chapter number five. God bless you. Thanks so much for watching.